Hi, and welcome to the X-22 Report. My name is Dave, and this is episode 119. And the title of this episode is You'll Be Watched, Recorded, and Tracked During the Economic Collapse. And we see that the market is in a positive, uh, on the positive side. Um, we're, uh, we're at 15,500 or so. Uh, gold has moved up a little bit uh, by $15, staying around the 13 hundred mark and um, the Asian markets were down Europe was down and uh, all eyes on the US stock market because that's where they want you looking they don't want you looking anywhere else but let's get into the economic collapse news and we're going to start off with Cyprus um, what's happening there is uh, deposits in the banks are at an all-time low they are basically non-existent because what's happening is they have capital controls in effect it's been over a hundred days and uh, nobody can open an account you still can't take that much money out and no one in their right mind foreign investors or people who are in Cyprus are going to put money into these banks because the the uh, government and the IMF and the European community and the central bankers have proven that if you put money in there we're going to take it from you so who in their right mind would do that so what they're seeing um, is that the Central Bank of Cyprus reported that not only did local deposits drop to a level not seen in 2007 plunging at the second fastest absolute amount in history but declined at the fastest rate ever and this is what's gonna this situation right here is is going to hurt Cyprus even more and again the central bankers do not care about that they want the governments to suffer they want the governments to be put into more debt they want the people to be out of work because what do these central bankers want they want to own the natural resources of each country that is what they're looking to do and in Greece what's happening there is uh, the unemployment is very high um, it's and people can't find work uh, about 23 percent uh, don't earn enough to stay above the poverty line and people are fleeing Greece looking for work elsewhere and you know why are these why would these people stay in Greece I mean for the Greek government to get a bailout from the EU they have to lay off approximately 25,000 employees from the government um, I think 12,500 right now and then down the line they have it split up around another 12,500 to put themselves into more debt and what that means is there's going to be more people looking for work so this is not going to help the situation and the people are looking at this and saying uh, we need to get out of here and go someplace else where we can actually make money and live and get out of this poverty that we're in now there was an article on zero hedge um, where it said that whenever the annual change in the core capex also known as the non-defense capital goods excluding aircraft shipments goes negative the US has traditionally entered a recession and the number is around positive 0.8 percent and declining fast and um, you know if we look back um, in January it was around uh, 14 and now it has dropped all the way to 0.8 and this looks like we are headed for a recession slash depression because you have to remember the US Fed is holding about 3.5 trillion in securities and it's increasing at a pace of 85 billion per month they're buying uh, pretty much half of it in uh, toxic real estate and the other half they're buying treasury bonds because nobody else will purchase the treasury bonds at this point now to keep the housing bubble uh, alive what the regulators are planning to do uh, they are planning to 
decrease the amount that people have to put down on a mortgage down to around 5% or so, or even lower. And where most people, and this is what happened back in 2005 to 2008, where people had no money down, 5%, they were taking out arms uh, and not worrying about uh, fixing in to the new interest rate until maybe you know five years later, three years later. And this pretty much caused uh, a lot of the problems along with what the banks were doing with the subprime. And, um, and we're starting the same exact pattern again. And um, there, what, what the central bank and the, the Fed are trying to do is they're trying to keep the housing market afloat. Because you have to remember, mortgage rates are going up. Um, when mortgage rates going up, people who normally uh, can afford a house, it, it pushes them out of the market because now they need to come up with uh, more money for their monthly payments because the interest rate is higher. Uh, they do not have the down payment, so they were getting the no, the, uh, no down payment loans or the 5% loans. And now as the interest rates go up, it kind of pushes them out of the market and they're trying to bring people back and they're having a very difficult time keeping uh, the, the real estate bubble inflating. Now, D.R. Horton, um, which is a, a home builder, uh, their stocks are down about 4%. And this goes on to say, despite any and every talking head reassurance that rising more rising mortgage rates won't impact the awesomeness of the housing recovery, it seems the actual home builders have a different view. Home builders shocked and disturbed by rate jump. Uh, D.R. Horton, CEO, says disappoint, uh, disappointed rates rose so violently. D.R. Horton, CEO, says traffic count has slowed since rate rise. So even the home builders are reporting that um, their traffic for people coming in purchasing homes has declined. We have seen mortgage applications plunge. We've seen more people moving into arms instead because the interest is much lower. And it seems like we're heading into this same exact repeat of uh, prior to 2008 and the crash. The only difference this time is, again, the Fed is purchasing uh, the, the 40 to 45 billion of uh, mortgage-backed securities, uh, the toxic mortgage-backed securities, plus the number of foreclosures still on the banks is very high, and the amount of people who are unemployed, underemployed, do not own a home now, cannot purchase a home now because they were foreclosed on, they lost their home, they lost their job, and now they're renting. So we have a very, very different situation uh, this time. Now, under Obama, uh, more people have gotten food stamps than jobs. And this goes on to say that uh, during Obama administration has created around 7.2 million jobs over the years. And more than 32 million Americans were receiving assistance uh, from the Supplemental Nutritional Assistance Program in January of 2009. And this was reported in the Washington Times. However, by this April, the number has grown to almost 48 million people. That's 16 million Americans, more than twice as many that got jobs. And, you know, that is just unbelievable and ridiculous that this is how this economy is going and from what we're seeing not what the stock market is showing from the real everyday person who's living out in the real world we can see that the economy is not doing well in Europe they are seeing I mean this is why Cyprus is still having problems. Greece is still having problems. Italy is still having problems. I know there was a report saying that the unemployment is, in Spain is getting much be better. It's now 26%. 26 unemployment. The youth unemployment between 50 and 
where is this getting better? What, that it came down a couple points? Yeah, but you're going to find out there's going to be adjustments um, because they, were, they, they included part-time work. It, it's always manipulated. It, it's always to make you think everything is getting better. But I'm sorry, when something's at 26% and it fell from whatever it was, 27%, to me, it's at 26%. And what happens next month when it's at 26.5%? Then you'll never see that story again, and it'll just fall off the news, and, and you know no one will ever, ever show that again. But if it went from 27% down to 8%, all right, now we're talking. But you know, don't give me that things are getting better when it comes down uh, a, a, a half a percentage or 1%, and then they'll make their adjustments, and they'll say, oh, it was because it was, you know, during this period of time, we're counting two people getting uh, two part-time jobs, and this is what always happens, and we will find out what happens later on. Now, since uh, the Detroit, you know, since Detroit has uh, uh, declared bankruptcy, and it looks like the bankruptcy is going through, there are a lot of homes in Detroit that are being gobbled up by the Chinese. Um, and this goes on to say specifically bargain hunting Chinese investors. Since the bankruptcy was announced, uh, Caroline Chen, a real estate broker in Troy, Michigan, says she's received tons of calls from people in mainland China. I have people calling and saying, I'm serious. I want to buy 100 to 200 properties. Noting that one of her colleagues recently sold 30 properties to a Chinese buyer and um, they are just coming in they have the money and they are just purchasing all of these homes now talking about China uh, China's yuan set to become global reserve currency uh, with uh, backed by gold and the recent media reports in China and Russia suggest that China is continuing to consider backing the yuan with gold and according to media reports, the People's Bank of China is considering phasing out the dollar as their reference currency or peg for the yuan and start to using gold as their reference point. Besides being an important financial and geopolitical move, it would also be a symbolic act intended to show the U.S. and the world that they are capable of taking the risk associated with a departure from the dollar standard. With gold now traded in the yuan, it appears to be only a matter of time before oil is traded in yuan, thereby positioning the yuan as the petro yuan and a rival to the petrodollar as the global reserve currency. And the central bankers and the United States government realize this. They know what's going on. And this is why when you hear about cyber attacks, they say that they're all pretty much uh, I mean, it used to be other countries, but now it's been completely just China that they're coming from China. And I said this before, when you're doing any type of cyber attack, you can only get the IP from the last attack. A smart hacker, a smart cyber attacker will bounce the attack off of many servers and then completely direct it towards the goal by using the last server. So the last server that was used is in China. Where it originated, they don't know. And that's all they know. I mean, it could come from the United States. And they could be bouncing it all around the world and eventually um, bounce it off China to be the last one. And that's what everyone is reporting. And by saying that China is the, uh, the the country that is doing the cyber attack, that is attacking our infrastructure, that is attacking our banks. Again, Panetta, the DHS, Janet Napolitano, uh, the government has says any attack, any cyber attack is an act of war. It is like a cyber pearl harbor. And this is what we are seeing and this is what they are building up to. Okay, let's move on here. 
Now, the pacifist Japan no more. Uh, Japan is taking the stance that uh, they will not be pacifist, that if something happens, they will push forward into going and protecting and going into war. And what this says is that Japanese leadership is moving further away from the pacifist constitution imposed on Tokyo by the American occupation administration over a half a century ago. The last time Tokyo updated its national defense program guidelines was in 2010. The U.S. drafted Article 9 of the Japanese Constitution prohibits the very possibility for Japan to wage war and have its own modern army. Despite that, today Japan boasts one of the best armies in Asia. Um, Japanese servicemen have vast real warfare experience and have been taking part in all the conflicts started by the U.S. in the past two decades. And um, the potential threat Japan might face at the moment come from Asian continent. China not only has the world's largest army, but has been dramatically modernizing its military forces over the last decade. And to deal with all this and their ter um, territorial dispute over the remote island, Japan reportedly plans to establish a Marines task force. Purchase of unmanned surveillance drones is also planned to monitor the country's borders. And we can see that Japan is preparing and they are getting ready for this war. China is preparing and getting ready for this war. And who is pushing this war? Well, that would be the central bankers, U.S. government, and Israel. Netanyahu rehashes false claims about Iran's nuclear energy program that they're this close to building a nuclear bomb. Israel, United States have been saying this for over 20 years. On this page from this report, I listed again going back to 1992, 1995, 1997, 1998, all stating that Iran is five years out in making a bomb. And every couple of years, they keep using the same thing and it's been over 20 years and we haven't seen their bomb and they just continually say this over and over and if you want to read I, I did it in one of my uh, a couple episodes back but if you want to read it I have all the dates it goes all the way up to um, 2011 and it talks about how many times uh, they, they they say that you know they have weapons of mass destruction. They're 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 this close to making the nuclear weapon. They have the parts. They have the capability. They're one month out. They're two years out. They're five years out. And I mean, this is going way back. So what they're doing is they're pushing the war agenda. They're trying everything and anything to get it started. And just. The other day, Israel was saying that, you know, if Syria keeps provoking, that Israel is going to take action. All they are doing is setting the stage for war. Just like the United States government was saying that Syria is using weapons of mass destruction, which would be the chemical weapons, just like Iraq had weapons of mass destruction, which they never found. They're using the same tactic, but it's not working. The American people, Congress, have no interest in invading at this time. But since the American people and Congress have no interest, they're going to make interest by creating some type of an event to bring us into war. And this will wake up the people of America. It will wake up Congress because it will be bloody, it will be horrific, and uh, something terrible will happen. Okay, let's move on here. Sweden proposes a Nordic Battalion Force Plan. Now, a potential joint Nordic Battalion Force will be on the table when defense ministers and commanders from Sweden, Finland, Norway, and Denmark meet to discuss the Swedish proposal this fall. And um, it, would be, it would function as a regional force and um, it could be used for crisis management, it could be used um, for defense, it could be used for any type of situation that they need it. 
and um, it looks like every single country is getting prepared in some way or another. Okay, let's move on here. Now, the United States, and I've said this uh, a couple episodes back, but they are using the Philippine Islands uh, island for um, their to, to to bring their assets into there because it's right next to China, and what they're doing is they are using the Philippines uh, to have a presence in this area, and the what the Philippines will receive six river patrol boats from the U.S. Navy. Four of 12 F-A-50 fighter jets will also be delivered to the Philippine military. And the other things, the other gifts that they, they will be getting are um, radar systems, anti-sub helicopters, amphibious assault vehicles, and anti-craft guided missiles, and um, also uh, around $345 million to uh, modernize uh, their their whole base and everything over there. So, you know, we're making it very nice for them. And this goes on to say that the basis access accord will have the effect of a permanent U.S. military facility in the guise of rotational deployments and interoperability. And, of course, this is what the U.S. says. Oh, no, we just want to have a rotation military force there. But what they're actually doing is they're setting it up. And eventually, when the time comes, that will be a base of operation. Okay, let's move on here. Now, the Amash Amendment was defeated, and um, the House has defeated the Justin Amash Amasa, maybe Amash Amendment, uh, that would have drastically curbed a national security problem that collects the phone records of millions of Americans. And right now, the NSA is permitted to spy on every single person. And the President went on to say, um, however, we oppose the current effort in the House to hastily dismantle one of our intelligent community counterterrorism tool. This blunt approach is not the product of an informed, open, or deliberative process. We urge the House to reject the Amash Amendment and instead move forward with an approach that appropriately takes into account the need for a reasoned review of what tools can be best secure the nation. And really... This is completely against the Fourth Amendment. Um, it, it violates our rights to privacy, and um, the president, the government, they need to spy on every single American. They need to account for everyone. They need to put them into groups. They need to make uh, these groups and create these lists so when the time comes they know who to round up and who not to. This is what the Germans did back in World War II and it made it much easier um, for them to go out and get those people and the same thing will be happening here and um, this is why they are uh, not going to stop the spying. Now the Pentagon is going to deploy huge blimps over Washington, D.C. for a 360-degree surveillance. And it goes on to say, a pair of high-tech army blimps is coming to the greater Washington, D.C. area, and soon they will be able to provide the military with surveillance powers that spans hundreds of millions of acres from North Carolina to Niagara Falls. And... Um, once these blimps are above the nation's capital, it will allow the Army to see for 320 miles in any direction for 10,000 feet above the Earth. The system can be set up to operate on its own for an entire month without requiring refueling and offers the Pentagon surveillance capabilities that dwarf other options at penny on the dollar. And... Um, and what these things do and what they're saying that they need this for is it enables commanders to defend against threats including hostile cruise missiles, low-flying manned and unmanned aircraft, tactical ballistic missiles, large caliber rockets, and moving surface vehicles such as boats, launchers, automobiles, and tanks. Now, why are they doing this? Because 
this will be our way of life. These blimps will be across the country when the the collapse comes or if they get the war started and the war gets started, uh, these blimps will have a two-purpose role um, to detect what they were saying, but then also to keep an eye on everyone because these blimps are also equipped with the appropriate lenses to wage sophisticated surveillance missions and they're able to see down um, to street level and uh, these will be very effective and we will see these blimps uh, all over the place they'll be monitoring everything that goes on every move everyone makes and um, they will always be watching everyone all the time everywhere non-stop and this is what they're trying to do and we will see this very soon okay let's move on here now there is a new threat um, a cyber attack threat by the is Adin al Qassam cyber fighters are threatening banks with a new wave of distributed denial of service attacks and al Qassam has taken responsibility for a series of cyber assaults that have plagued some of the nation's largest banks shuttering the online banking operation of Wells Fargo PNC Bank of America Citibank um, that we saw which they reported on all last year and here we go again where the al Qassam says but this time it's going to be different we're just not gonna hit them with the denial of service we're going to do more damage and uh, you'll feel this in the coming days and this report goes on to say al Qassam's latest threat come less than a week after Quantum Dawn 2 and that was a drill that the banks took um, to simulate a cyber attacks cyber attack on the bank and um, here we you know they had a drill now all of a sudden um, is Adin al Qassam cyber fighters are threatening the banks and like I said in my other reports I do believe that um, something will happen some type of cyber attack I don't know about the main event one yet uh, they might use this during the fall uh, to hit the banks uh, they might do a a small one right now to show that it can be done and uh, we I, I believe that they're gonna hold this off until the fall but we'll see what happens uh, this way they can you know they'll say that you know the first part of the crash uh, the collapse I should say um, in the fall they can blame it on another country and um, either Syria uh, to bring us into war as a false flag or you know just to say they hit us and this is what caused the collapse it had nothing to do with the Fed had nothing to do with money printing had nothing to do with uh, President Obama's policies or the government's policies and we can definitely see this happening now something very interesting in Florida Airport which is it, it wasn't Miami it was Opelika, um Airport and there was a strange container that was unsealed and it had traces of uh, uranium inside but the report was very vague and um, you know they it was um, they, they evacuated the area and it was depleted uranium and from other reports a while back there were reports that a lot of their radioactive uh, material had gone missing but I haven't heard any more um, as the time I'm doing this any more on this and if any other information does come up or somebody knows anything about it um, you can post it to the people write me an email and this way we can see what's going on listen everyone I really want to thank everyone for listening be well be safe and especially be prepared thanks a lot